Rabbi Ammon tells over every single year, his wife and himself, they go out to the cemetery out in Staten Island, and on Erev Rosh Hashanah, their minigwas, they would go to visit his mother-in-law. His wife would daven by the kever of the mother-in-law, and he would ask Mechila again and again and again. Every year on Erev Rosh Hashanah. One year, Rabbi Ammon and his wife was coming back from an affair in Brooklyn, and they came over to Verrazano, and they're making their way through the Staten Island Expressway, and it was a week before Rosh Hashanah. Rabbi Ammon turns to his wife and says, Honey, listen, we're about to drive by the exit of the cemetery. What's the point that slept me back here next week? We're here already. So this year we won't go to your mother, Erev Rosh Hashanah. We'll go a week before. But we're here. Save the trip. Let's go. She says, okay, fine, you're right, we're here. So they get out of the exit, he comes into the cemetery. He walks up to his mother-in-law and says, Hi, Ma, are you Michael me? And his, mother, his wife begins to pray, and together they're shuckling around his mother-in-law's grave. Rabbi Ammon picks his eyes up and he looks, and he sees in the distance, there's a whole group of boys in suits, standing in a circle, on the floor is a coffin, hole in the ground, and nobody's moving. Rabbi Ammon turns to his wife and says, what's going on over there? How come nobody's doing anything? They're just looking at each other. No one's moving. Honey, do you mind if I go over there for a minute just to see what's going on? I'd like to stop for a pause. Do you see what it means to be a Rebbe? Do you see what it means to be a Gadol? It's always about, ah, how can I help this guy? Okay, back to the story. So he goes out to this group of boys. He walks up to them and says, Hey guys, what's going on? How come no one's doing anything? They have a big smile. They say, Are you a rabbi? He says, Yeah. Thank God. Rabbi. Listen, the hearse, they dump this here, right next to the grave. We don't know what to do. This is our father here in the coffin. We're standing here looking at each other. We didn't make any arrangements. We don't know what to do. Can you help us? Rabbi Ammon says, sure. Guys, how many guys do we have here? He starts counting. One, two, three. He sees that there are six boys and there were two uncles and a family friend. Rabbi Ammon says, wow, nine people. Now I understand why Hashem brought me here to the cemetery a week earlier than normal. I wasn't supposed to be here today, but obviously he sent me here to be the minion. Okay, guys. Together, he grabs a shovel, he turns it over. And then he turns to the boys, he says, grab this side of the rope, grab that side of the rope. They slip the rope inside the coffin, and very gently, they lay the coffin to rest in the hole. Rabbi Ammon grabs the shovel, turns it upside down, starts pushing the dirt in. And as the moment it's covered, he turns to the guys and says, okay guys, chavod, kaddish. They look at him, kahu, kaddish. It gadal vi it kadash. Go ahead, chavot. They look at him, Rabbi. What are you talking about? He says, "Say kadish, your father." Rabbi, we, we don't know what you're talking about. Oh, okay. Rabbi Ammon pulls a sitter out from the inside of his jacket. He opens it up to kadish. He hands it to the boy. He says, "Go ahead, chavot, kadish." The boy looks on the sitter and he says, "Rabbi, I can't read." He says, "You can't read? Not even the alphabet?" He says, "No." Rabbi says, okay. Gentlemen, repeat after me. Yitkadal vi yitkadash. And he went through piece by piece of the Kaddish and all the boys repeated line by line, word by word. And the Minyan said Kaddish for the man who passed, their father. Just when they finished the Kaddish, Rabbi Ammon turns to the boys and says, okay guys, now, before you go, let's finish off. Let's push all the rest of the dirt into the hole. No, nah, Rabbi, come on, we're done. We got uh, Leroy over there on the tractor. We hired him. We're done here. Let him come and fill up the hole. We're finished. We don't want to get dirty, Rabbi. The suits, they're a rental. We don't, we don't want to get dirty. Rabbi Ammon says, no, no, no. Come on, this is your father. Kavod Amit. Have a little respect. Fill up the hole. Well, no matter what he said, Rabbi Ammon said, you know what? I'll show him how to do it. He turns around. He grabs the shovel. He starts to fill up the hole. And he turns around, the crickets, they're gone. He says, guys, come back here, your father. They're gone. They're gone. 
Rabbi Ammon single-handedly finished filling up the hole and buried this man alone. Just then, Leroy jumps off the tractor and he runs up to Rabbi Ammon and he says, Rabbi, you did the whole job by yourself. You didn't need me. Once you buried the man, you might as well put the nameplate. And he hands Rabbi Ammon the nameplate and he looks down and he sees the name, Simon Pollock. He says, Simon Pollock. Well, Simon, I did my best. Now I know why Hashem brought me to the cemetery a week early. Baruch Hashem, I was the tenth guy so your kids could say Kaddish. And he puts the nameplate right at the top of the pile of dirt. With those words, he goes back to his wife and he says, Honey, you're not going to believe this. They had nine. I was the tenth guy. She says, that's amazing. Wow. If not for you, they couldn't have said Kaddish. She says, yeah, this guy Simon Pollock. He lucked out. I was here today probably because of him. And with those words, they leave. Back to Deal, New Jersey. A week later, the Ammon family was enjoying a family wedding in Lakewood. And that night, all the relatives came from all over, including from Seattle, Washington. Rabbi Ammon bumps into one lost long uncle that he hasn't seen in years, and he says to his uncle, hey, you want to hear a crazy thing? Last week I was coming in from Brooklyn, I stopped off by the cemetery, and it was over there that uh, I bumped into these nine boys, and they couldn't say Kaddish, and I was the tenth guy, and I buried this guy, and they handed me this nameplate, some guy, Simon Pollock. His uncle said, what was that name? He says, you know, Simon Pollock. Rabbi Ammon, you don't know who that is? He says, no, who's Simon Pollock? His uncle's jaw dropped and his face went white. He says, you don't know who that is? He says, no, who is that? His uncle says, Rabbi, Rabbi Ammon, 52 years ago in Seattle, Washington, we didn't really have more than a day school Talmud Torah. And we knew that the only way to ensure Yiddishkeit and to be able to have another generation of Torah, we're going to have to send our boys at the age of 13 out to Brooklyn, New York, out to Rabbi Davis Yeshiva in Brighton Beach. The problem was, who can afford it in those days? To send the boy out, there's the plane tickets, and then there's the dormitory fee, and then there's the tuition. And so that Shabbos, we made this big, unbelievable Kiddush and Shul sponsor a yeshiva boy. And right at the end of the Kiddush, we lined up all our 13-year-olds. And with a big smile, the president of the shul said, All right, guys, who's going to sponsor Harry's kid? One guy in the back raises his hand. Who's going to sponsor this guy? Another guy raises his hand. Who's going to sponsor this kid to go to yeshiva in Brooklyn? Another guy raises his hand. Rabbi Ammon, Simon Pollock sponsored you. His uncle said, Rabbi Ammon, at the time that you needed him the most, Simon Pollock was there for you. And at the time that he needed you the most, Hashem made sure that you were going to be there for him.